All right, guys, welcome back. And now that we understand the basics of properties, what I want to do is show you guys something really awesome that you can do with them, and that is how to take two properties and bind them together. So what we're going to be doing in this example is we're going to create an integer property called X and another one called Y, and we're going to bind them together. Now, whenever we do this, both of those properties are pretty much tied together or connected. So whenever we change the value of X, the value of Y gets changed automatically. Sounds kind of weird, but it's actually pretty easy once you see everything. So just like before, whenever we add a string property, we can also have an integer property. Of course, instead of storing a string, it stores an integer, and I'm gonna name this X. So set it equal to new, simple integer property, and in here, you give it an initial value. So right now, I have an object X, and it has initial value of three. So let me go ahead and make one more called Y. And I'm not going to have any initial value for this. So as of now, X is equal to 3 and Y doesn't equal anything. Has a null value. So what I'm actually going to do with Y is I'm going to bind it to the value of X. And let me just say um, like multiply by 10. So the value of y is bound to the value of x multiplied by 10. So they're tied together, connected. In other words, whenever we update the value of x, for example, to 7, the value of y gets automatically updated to 70. So pretty cool we don't have to type any extra code. And uh, that's one of the awesome reasons that people like to learn about properties. So system out print line, let me just print out a little demo so you guys can see. So I'll print out the value of X and Y each time and uh, you guys can clearly see what's going on. So X, get value, and do the same thing for Y. So Y, get value, and then let me just add a new line so it looks a little bit cleaner. All right, so that's what we're gonna do at first. And also, if I copy this, show you guys kind of the point of all this. So what we're going to do after we print out that initial binding data is we're going to take X and we'll say set the value equal to something like a nine and then print it out again. So let me run this and I'll show you guys what's going on. And by the way, this has like nothing to do with JavaFX or the windows, but I'm going to show you guys how you can use this for JavaFX in just a second. So what you can see is of course, X initial value of three, nothing new there. And since Y is bound to the value of X times 10, that's why Y equals 30. Now later on, a few lines later, what we did is we took X and we set the value equal to nine. All right, now notice in code, we never changed the value of Y. All right, so between here and here, we're not changing the value of Y, but since Y is always bound to X multiplied by 10, since X changed, Y changed with it. Pretty awesome. So again, like I said, this doesn't have anything you know to do with like GUI development, but the reason that people like doing this in JavaFX is because let's say that you want to like add something to the middle of your window. Actually, let me run this. So let's say that you have this button and you wanna always have it in the middle of the window whenever you expand, kind of like it is right now. Well, what you can do is you can actually bind this to the center of the width and the center of the height. So it doesn't really matter what size this is, it always just looks for the center. So whether it's you know 640 by 640 or 900 by 900, they're always bound together correctly. And there's also like a million other cool things that you can do with it, but that's one little quick example. But for right now, hopefully you guys understand the concept of binding. Um, yeah, any questions, ask me on the forum and I'll see you next video.